Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today, the first broadcast day for this week. Thanks for joining us. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Titus in chapter 2. If at all possible, right now, stop, reach over, get your Bible, and join me there, or turn on that electronic gadget of yours. But some way or another, if possible, get to the book of Titus, the very end of chapter 2, spilling over into chapter 3 for the broadcast today. I've got a gospel tract in my hand, and just in case you don't know what a gospel tract is. I will explain that here in just a moment because the production of gospel tracts is the main thrust of the ministry that we do here at Bible Tracts Incorporated, the parent ministry behind the broadcast of Bible Tract Echoes. I pray that you can uh, have a great day in the Lord today. While you're getting your Bible, I'll get something on which you can jot some notes. But to help us get into the Bible study, let me ask uh, the question and get us in this way. If you ever want to get a lively conversation going these days among church-going people, here's all you need to do. Just ask this question. Are you ready? Here it is. What's wrong with the preaching these days? (laughs) What's wrong with the preaching these days? Now, you ask the question, and you're going to get a truckload of reactions. Some folk will talk about the, the length of the sermon. Others will talk about the sermon being boring or too intellectual. Still, others are going to talk about the fact that the preaching had no content to it or it wasn't practical. Uh, There's no meat in it. You name it, you're going to get all kinds of comments. And all of these, frankly, can be true, sadly, and they can be valid about many of us preachers. But have you ever heard this comment? It goes like this. Our preacher is just too, well, too dogmatic and too blunt. Well, so What in the world should present-day preaching be like anyway? Does God tell us anything at all about how preaching should be done? Well, I think you know the answer to that. The answer is yes. God has spoken on the issue, and we get to see some of what God has said here as we come to the end of Titus chapter 2 and spilling over into chapter 3. Get your Bible. Get something on which you can jot some notes. Now, I want you to have some note paper handy because at the end of this broadcast, my announcer will make known three ways by which you can contact us. I want you to do that. I want you to give me your name and your mail address because I want to put into your hand a free sample packet containing one each of our English gospel tracts. Well, that brings me back to what in the world a tract is. A gospel tract, dear friend, is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I've got one in my hand right now, and frankly, this is probably one of my most favorite tracts. It's entitled, You Can No, you can know with a subtitle, Real Answers to Eternal Issues. These kinds of questions are answered in this gospel tract in a short statement from the Word of God. Questions like this, is there a hereafter? Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? Where do the saved go at death? Where do the lost go when they die? But then it leads into this question, where will I go when I die? And that is the gem of the question, isn't it, friend? We've got to help people to realize that there is an eternity. They're going to go someplace. There's only two options. We want people to go to heaven. God wants people to go to heaven. This great track, you can know, exclamation point. These things God said about his Bible, these things are written that you might know that you have eternal life. 
Friend, do you know you have eternal life? Here's a great gospel track. Get it from us. It's in that sample packet. Get the sample packet. You're going to find some tracks there that really are meaningful to you. And by the way, we give away our tracks all over the world. We even pay the shipping. And to do that, we depend on God's people to help us. Would you consider helping us take the gospel to all the world? Please. This is our 80th year we've been doing this. God has been faithful through faithful people like you. Consider helping Bible tracks do the work of the gospel. If your Bible is open there to Titus, the last verse, Titus 2, verse 15 says this, These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee, going on in chapter 3, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Stop right there. Now, friend, I see these three verses as connected. They all speak to the issue of how a pastor ought to handle God's word when he preaches and deals with the people in his church. In verse 15, there at the end of chapter 2, you're going to see the words, these things. Now, that phrase, these things, refers to what has been laid out already there in chapter 2. Chapter 2 deals with how to develop godly, healthy, spiritually healthy laymen in the local church. But not only do verses 1 through 10 of chapter 2 speak to how to develop healthy saints, the verses also tell us what a healthy saint looks like. So, verse 15 here is focused on preaching to believers believers in the respect of their interaction with each other and other believers there in the church. But chapter 3 basically turns the page here, so to speak. There in chapter 3, we're going to see how a pastor speaks to believers on how they interact with the unsaved society that's around them. So how is a pastor supposed to preach to the believers in his flock? Well, verse 15 of chapter 2 gives the pastor both his assignment and his authority. Three verbs, three verbs are found in verse 15. They are all imperatives, which means they are commands from God. A pastor is to speak, he's to exhort, and he is to rebuke. That's his assignment. Now, the word speak, honestly, is a very general word for talking, but here in the context, here it refers to the pastor's preaching ministry. His task is to speak forth words that convey with clarity what God's word says. He's supposed to read the word and give the meaning of what the text says. Then the pastor is to exhort. Here we see the pastor is to be persuasively involved I'm going to say that again. The word exhort means the pastor is to be persuasively involved as he declares the word of God. He's to urge his hearers to listen and apply God's word. There's supposed to be some passion when he preaches. This word is the word found over in Romans 12, 1, which begins, I beseech you. That's the word. I beseech you. I beg of you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That's a passionate word. But then verse 15 goes on to use the word rebuke. When a pastor has a church member who is unwilling or does not want to obey the clear word of God, then the pastor is to go to that person, that believer, and convince them and admonish them. He's to show how their actions and their attitudes are contrary to the clear word of God. Now, I I quickly here add this note to what I'm saying that the only truth that the pastor has to declare is Scripture. Sometimes we preachers can, well, let's be honest, sometimes we preachers can pontificate about things where there is no Bible truth to base it upon. And when we do that, we are in trouble up to our neck. We preachers need to be careful to declare the living word of God, not our word. Verse 15 also uses the word authority. This word will not be, frankly, well received by many in our society today. You see, in too many churches these days, the pastor tries to build a consensus on an issue before he ever preaches on that issue. 
Now, frankly, when that happens, it's a sign of a hireling shepherd. You see, when verse 15 says that a pastor is to speak with all authority, it means that he is to make authoritative decrees, but again, based upon God's revealed word. The point is, he is not to be afraid to preach with clarity when the Bible is clear, speak boldly when the Bible is bold. Pastors are to preach decisive sermons. They're to preach sermons expecting people to make decisions and interact with and apply what they preach because it is the Word of God. When a pastor preaches this way, he must do so being under authority. He must preach knowing he can clearly display from Scripture the truth behind what he is teaching and preaching. A pastor preaches under authority when he reminds himself that he, on his own, has no authority. Friend, I'm here on the radio today teaching the Word of God, but Mark Smith has no authority. He's no smarter than anybody else, and frankly, he's less smarterer, to use bad English, he's less smart than a whole lot of people. But I've got the authority of the Word of God. That is truth. All a pastor's authority comes from, it's derived from Christ and is to be carried out by the pastor displaying Christ before the church flock. Jesus spoke with authority, did he not? But he also used tenderness and love. The people to whom Jesus spoke loved, knew that Jesus loved them. Jesus accepted them even when he rebuked them. Spilling over into chapter 3, verse 1 of chapter 3 gives us one more imperative. It's given to pastors, and pastors are to put their flock in mind or cause them to remember how to interact with lost people. Why? Simple. The whole purpose of a local church is to prepare its people to be like Christ, to then take the gospel to the lost world in which they live. Beloved, if you've got a pastor, if you've got a man in the pulpit that does this like we saw here, if, you, if yesterday at your local church, your pastor preached this way, then glory to God, praise God for him, stand up for him, pray for him, say amen when he declares the truth of the word of God. If nobody else is saying amen, be careful. Your amen may scare him to death, but say it anyway. Let him know that, man, you are preaching the truth and I love it. Do it again. Do more of it. But more importantly, the th- greatest thing you can do for your pastor is not just listen to the sermon, perhaps even take notes. Far better is to practice the truth he preaches. Respond to the truth. Let his preaching of the truth impact you and say, Lord, what do I need to do with this clear text that's been declared by my faithful pastor? Put it and then put it on and then go forth and live out the truth of Christ. Perhaps you're listening today and one of the things you don't like about church is the pastor preaches with too much clarity. Friend, he's doing his job. The problem is with you that you're lost in sin. You can't go to heaven that way. The sin stain on your soul makes you unfit for heaven and makes you only fit for hell. And your pastor can't fix that. Only Jesus can. That's why Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood for you. You need him to save you from your sin, to clean up your soul. Only then will you have eternal life. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.